Hello everyone and welcome back to Electronics Prepper, the channel where we try to learn as much as possible about electronics to become more self-reliant with technology and prepare for the future. Today I want to show you three useful circuits that can be used to uh, create a precise rectification, a precise full wave rectification of a certain signal. Normally when we have a uh, alternative current and we want to rectify it into DC current and uh, fuel um, uh, basically power uh, some circuits we simply use um, um, uh, a diode bridge with four um, four diodes and um, filtering capacitor and that's perfectly fine for most applications um, especially when we are trying to power a circuit However, sometimes we don't want to power anything, sometimes we just have um, a signal, so we have certain uh, alternative current voltages that <clears throat> are not supposed to power something, but they are supposed to represent a certain signal uh, conveying information, and for various reasons we want to rectify it so that we don't have both polarities but we only have one polarity. In this case we need to use a different circuit. We cannot use um, 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 a diode bridge, uh, a full bridge rectifier because um, we will have losses on each diode and they will be significant especially if we have um, small voltages for our signal we won't be able to use a, a full bridge of diodes so we need to use different circuits different solutions this is why um, i'm presenting to you today's video so we can see what solutions we have uh, and how good are they or um, uh, what what advantages and what disadvantages we have uh, in each of them when it comes to circuits like these that tend to be more complex, manufacturing them at home can become more difficult. Luckily, there is PCBWay, a leading PCB manufacturer with many more capabilities to help you build even your most difficult projects. You can easily get an instant quote for PCB manufacturing from the website's front page, upload the Gerber files and have your PCBs created in just 24 hours. Need more to get your project finished? They also offer PCB assembly services with manufacturer direct pricing so you can have your PCBs delivered with components soldered on. This way you don't have to do the tedious work yourself. Or perhaps you want just the SEMED stencils so you can solder the components yourself. Just finish your design in your favorite design software, upload all the necessary files to PCBWay and you'll be contacted by one of their professional representatives after they manually review your project, offering you a one-on-one -on -one customer service to make sure that your circuits get fabricated just the way you want. Are you building a circuit for a device that will need a case in the end? Then they can certainly help you with that as well, offering you 3D printing or injection molding services to have your custom-made plastic case, or perhaps CNC machining services to help you with a custom metal case. All you need to do is go to pcbway.com, the link is in the description. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and now let's get started with the circuit. Okay, so <clears throat> like I said, I will show you three different circuits, so bear with me as uh, this video will be a little bit longer than usual. Two of them I have here in microcap and I will simulate them and I will show you how they work. And another um, I didn't bother to simulate, I just uh, tested on the breadboard in uh, real life. Um, it comes from a Texas Instruments document, I will put the link in the description so you can um, easily um, find it. <clears throat> this has some advantages and I will show you um, real results for uh, all of these situations. So, um, whenever we want to do a precise full wave rectification, we have a few options, each with advantages and disadvantages. 
The first and the simplest option is to use a single op amp in uh, inverting mode and um, basically uh, have the two uh, uh, feedback resistors equal value so that we don't uh, amplify or attenuate the signal at all. We get to have the same amplitude on the output. But the output of the op amp is not connected directly to the um, uh, feedback resistor, but rather through a rectifying diode um, or potentially it could uh, be um, a Schottky diode as well, although Schottky diodes are, um, are having some problems with um, reverse uh, leakage current. Anyway, the idea is that when uh, we would have a negative um, uh, signal on the input, uh, this op-amp being inverting uh, will, uh, will take its output and um, drag it up into the positive uh, values. Uh, this diode will conduct and basically the, the whole circuit will stabilize uh, with the voltage on the output equal to the voltage on the input but with reverse sign. So basically if we have negative voltage on the input we will have a positive voltage on the output and it will be uh, the same value. Okay, we have minus one volt on the input. We will have plus one volt on the output We have minus five volts on the input. We'll have a plus five volt on the output when we have uh, positive voltages on the uh, Input on the other hand um, This op-amp will try to drag its output downwards towards the the negative uh, rail of the uh, of the power supply uh, but uh, the, uh, the the diode will be in reverse uh, um, polarization, so it will not conduct current. So basically on the output we will have the same uh, current as on the input, the same voltage as on the input, because current will be able to flow through R13 and then R14, uh, in my case, directly towards the output the op amp will not do anything at all, will not be able to do anything at all um, in such situations. So, theoretically, in both cases, we will have positive values on the output. By the way, uh, both of the circuits, uh, the one that I'm showing you now and the next one that I will be showing you in a moment, are powered uh, in my simulation from plus minus 15 volts and I have a triangle wave um, uh, signal on the input that goes plus minus one volt, so two volts peak to peak, um, and it can be seen here with blue, with the blue waveform, right? Um, and with red, we can see the output of this first circuit. Now, <clears throat> there are a few problems. There are there are a couple of problems that are um, bothering us. First of all is the fact that uh, on positive uh, input uh, voltages, um, since the op-amp will not have any active role, the output will be dragged down by whatever impedance the next circuit has. Right now I have this resistor which is disabled. And by the way, I also have an extra diode here which is also disabled for the moment, so just ignore it. Uh, only this one, which is in blue, uh, is actually working. So, the first problem is that um, any impedance here that is comparable to the, the sum of the two resistors in the feedback of the op-amp will cause a significant drag down of the signal. At least on, on the... Uh, on the... Um, um, positive uh, side where um, the op-amp is not working. On the negative side, when the op-amp is working, we won't have that problem because the op-amp will do whatever it takes to give us on the output the desired voltages. However, on the positive side, we won't have any function from the op-amp. So if I activate, for example, a 20 kilo ohm here resistor, uh, which will basically form a voltage divider with these two 33 kilo ohm resistors then we get to see that when when the input voltages are positive the output voltage is a lot lot smaller right 
um, when the negative voltages are on the input um, we have positive on the output and they because the op-amp is doing its job they are able to get up to the necessary uh, peak voltage uh, in accordance to the input signal however on the positive side um, we have problems now okay let's say that we just place another op-amp as a buffer and uh, solve this problem however we still have another problem that is not so easily um, solvable if we take a look here we see this uh, rather weird uh, shape we see that um, um, this triangle uh, positive uh, part of the uh, negative of the input signal does not start smoothly from zero volts um, actually the input signal had to go down to some uh, minus 140 millivolts or so uh, until the entire circuit was able to to function properly and to start rectification so we see this uh, rather weird uh, drop okay which is not supposed to happen something similar is happening uh, when we are switching from negative uh, input uh, voltages to positive ones but the the distortion is a lot smaller so let's say that we might be able to just to just live with this distortion however um, in most cases we won't be able to live with this distortion now this is caused by the op amp going into saturation when uh, it it has positive voltages on the input it tries to drag its output down towards the negative rail and because there's no feedback that it's working for him he will drag its output down to the absolute most negative uh, vo value of um, of the output that he can have very close to the negative uh, power supply rail and that's when certain um, certain transistors inside of that op amp will get into saturation and once they get into saturation it's a problem because um, they will need a certain time to get out of the saturation and start working properly again and this is really the reason why we see um, these big distortions when um, the op amp needs to start uh, inverting from uh, from negative uh, well when the, when the signal goes from positive values into negative values and the op amp needs to start doing its inversion okay now we could prevent uh, this op amp from going into saturation by adding another diode here and i will activate it between the uh, the minus input and the output because then the op amp uh, as the op amp's output will be dragged down um the uh, the voltage on the output will not be allowed to go um, uh, lower than just one diode voltage drop uh, relative to the input and this will prevent it from going into saturation and then it will be able to just um, flip back very quickly without a problem so i've activated this diode here and as we can see those uh, uh those deformations those distortions have disappeared yeah they are still very uh, there are still some they are very 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 small but uh, in comparison to the the rest of the signal it's um, it's almost perfect however now we no longer have a full wave rectification because um, the the input the minus input of the op amp will be held at zero volts um, constantly so this will also get to be thrown out on the output so instead of having a full wave rectification we now only have a half wave rectification sometimes this is good sometimes this is uh, useful or just good enough so in that case okay we can definitely use this um the circuit but in other cases we can't we really want uh both um we, we really want a full wave rectification right both the positive and the negative um, side 
So for that, we need to complicate things a little bit and we need to use um, another... Um, we need to use another circuit that uses two op amps. One of them, which is uh, in, in the same, basically in the same um, configuration as this circuit that I've shown you so far. Uh, the only difference is that uh, the diode's um, um, orientation is uh, reversed. But um, I can show you now, if we reverse the, the orientation of the diode, what we get is basically um, still, full, uh, still a single uh, wave rectification or half wave rectification. Uh, it, it, we just flip the polarity around. So we don't have positive values, we have only negative values. And that's what we have here in the second circuit in this first part with the first top amp. <clears throat> we are essentially creating this half wave rectification for uh, negative values uh, well we are bringing positive values into negative ones and then we are using another op amp to combine this um this signal and now i should uh, basically i should run this other simulation okay um so with green we have this intermediate point and we see the um, half wave rectification just like before relative to the blue signal which is uh, the entire signal on the input right and then um, we take this intermediate point this uh, half wave rectification and we feed it into another op amp through a couple of resistors um, the intermediate signal through one resistor and uh, the input signal from the very beginning through another resistor <coughs> To another op amp that also works as an inverting op amp. We see here uh, a feedback resistor between the output and the minus uh, input, and also the two signals um, that we feed into it into the minus input. Um, and both op amps uh, we have the plus input connected to the ground. Um, let's just ignore this voltage for a moment. Let's consider that they are both connected straight to the ground. The result is that we have here um, a full wave precision rectification, which is denoted with the uh, color purple. Okay, uh, here it overlaps almost perfectly on the input signal, on the blue signal, but then when we have uh, negative values on the input, on the blue, we have positive values on, um, on the output. Um, the, the problem with the saturation still appears a little bit, but it's a lot smaller, just about 45 millivolts out of basically 2 volts peak to peak. Um, it's not that big of a deal, uh, and maybe it, it could be um, mitigated through, I don't know, better diodes. I used uh, 1 and 41, 48. These are pretty good, but I don't know, maybe there are even better ones. Anyway, overall we have a relatively nice uh, full wave rectification. Uh, one thing that needs to be mentioned is that all resistors must, ha must have the same value with the exception of this one that takes the intermediate signal and feeds it into the next op amp. This one has to have exactly half the resistance value of the other resistors. So it doesn't really matter what all that much what value we place for these resistors as long as these four are identical and this one is half of the others, okay? So um, I've defined R, this, this, uh, this R resistor as 1.5 kilo ohms. So we have 1.5 kilo ohms here, here, here and here. And here, because I have RU uh, divided by 2, I have 750 ohms of resistance here, okay? That's th this is really the only requirement, because if we would, uh, if we would uh, have this uh, of a, a different value, then we would have... Um, we, we would no longer have the same effect here, as we can see, right? Um, if I have, I don't know, 200, <clears throat> which is too small, uh, the um, negative, um, um, the, the positive side will be amplified more than it needs to 
and um yeah the <laughs> the output waveform will be deformed like this and we we don't want that so this needs to be exactly half of the other ones in order for us to have um um you know exactly the the nice full wave uh, rectified signal on the output now this circuit is something that you find quite uh, easily on the internet if you search for him um and you typically get to 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 have these um, explanations however what you don't get to have because they mo most people don't tell you but i will because i've made some tests is that uh, this circuit has some problems working with relatively small voltages so if you want to go down into the millivolts you will definitely have problems now let me show you real life um real life examples of um, signals that are processed through this second circuit that has some problems i've started with five volts peak to peak the yellow is the input signal and be careful because it has the zero line here the blue is the output signal which is uh, rectified uh, be careful it has the zero line here okay so it's uh, it's shifted down so it can better fit into the screen uh, i also have different voltages per vertical division for it to be a bit clearer anyway um the idea is that at five volts peak to peak the the circuit works uh, without problems at one volt peak to peak um so basically plus minus half a volt um the circuit also does a pretty good job However, as we decrease the amplitude at half a volt peak to peak, so basically plus minus 200 milli, 250 millivolts, um, we see that we are starting to have some, some problems. Uh, for the input negative values, we have uh, these peaks here. However, for the input positive values, we have these peaks here. Okay? so you can clearly see and I'm, I'm creating a rectangle around both of them now you can clearly see that uh some peaks are no longer well some values are no longer rectified correctly now this might not be a huge problem but it gets to be an even bigger problem at smaller input uh, signals at 100 millivolts peak to peak so basically plus minus 50 millivolts we have an even larger difference between the peaks okay um at 50 millivolts peak to peak we have an even larger difference and at 20 millivolts peak to peak we basically no longer have rectification at all so we need to be aware of this because um if we just search for the circuit uh, for or for this topic on the internet we find the circuit and we blindly use it uh, but uh, we don't know how good uh, he is well we, we we might have some negative surprises and yeah this is something that i've seen uh, nobody is actually telling and um I've, this is a, a actually a general uh, thing i've seen uh, people who post uh, most people who post circuits um on all sorts of websites they do very shallow tests and they don't really specify um, you know what's the range of parameters in which their circuit actually works and they always test uh, with uh, you know very good uh, input signals very good conditions mm. anyway uh, this clearly shows us that uh, we need to do our own research and our own experiments to make sure that um, those circuits work well. Okay, so <clears throat> that was it with these two circuits. And this one uh, in particular with the full wave rectification. Now, let me show you a third, um, a third uh, circuit that... Um, I, I had to search for because I wasn't uh, I needed to rectify uh, smaller voltages as well and I just um, I, I just 
uh, couldn't use the previous circuit that I've just shown you because of the reasons I've just shown you. Fortunately, um, there has been uh, there have been some experiments done by someone working for Texas Instruments, and they created a very good uh, document. I will put a link in the description where they show us basically um, a completely different circuit. It still uses some diodes, it still uses a couple of op amps and some resistors, um, but overall it works differently and it works a lot, lot better. Uh, if we take a look at the design requirements, they say supply voltage plus minus 15 volts, just like in my case, but the inputs um, plus minus 50 millivolts up to plus minus 10 volts. So they specifically wanted to go down to 50 millivolts with the, their circuit so that uh, it works well in those conditions as well. And that was, uh, that was something that uh, attracted my attention and so I put it on the breadboard, I um, tested it. We have here, um, th the principle of operation is, is pretty simple, of course you can read it uh, in, uh, in the uh, put the full file because it's in English, however, let me just quickly explain it to you. We no longer have um, inverting amplifiers, uh, both amplifiers are actually, um, at least at first glance, they are configured as non-inverting ones, however, um, they will work slightly different based on the input signal. So, <clears throat> the first amplifier is actually more of a buffer that takes a look at the essentially the output voltage and it basically... Um, it basically acts like as a buffer. It gives on uh, out on its output whatever voltage is on the input. So it doesn't invert anything at all. It doesn't amplify. It doesn't attenuate. However, that's when the trick comes. If we have positive, um, if we have positive voltages on the input then this diode will basically start to conduct D2 and it will feed the signal into the second op-amp which will also work as a buffer. Uh, it will give on the output the, the, the output voltage um, that's exactly on the input and this is going to be seen by the negative input of the first top amp which will continue to work as a buffer so there will be no amplification and no reversing of polarity whatsoever d1 will be blocking in that particular case okay so they actually break down the circuit um, like this so you can understand it better right so D2 conducts, this one, the second op-amp acts as a buffer, it gives uh, whatever voltage needs on the output, which will also be seen by the input op-amp. So for every positive voltage on the input, we'll, uh, we will also have positive voltage on the output. However, when, um, when we have negative voltages, these two diodes will start to conduct in reverse, just like here. So, um, basically, the first top amp, which it acts like a buffer, will try to drag its output down in the negative values, which will make D2 stop conducting. D1 will start conducting, and that's why uh, it will keep, uh, you know, this op amp uh, working as a buffer. But now the signal is fed to the second op amp through this um, uh, feedback uh, mechanism with R1 and R2 and we can see here that the signal basically will uh, will get to be inserted into the negative input of the second op amp which will make this op amp work in um, inverting mode so for every negative value on the input we will have positive values on the output okay R3 is needed to to drag uh, to the ground um, both the um, uh, the cathode of the D2 diode and the uh, input plus of the second op amp so that both get uh, to stay at that zero uh, volt potential uh, this is very important for negative values okay on the input so this is how the circuit works 
it basically acts like a huge complex buffer on positive values and like an inverting amplifier only on the negative input values okay and this one indeed does have uh, much better performances let me show you quickly so we have here <clears throat> again with the yellow the input signal with the blue the output signal 5 volts peak to peak perfect uh, rectification but we had this before 1 volt peak to peak uh, the same perfect rectification but now when in the previous circuit we we started having some problems now we don't have problems anymore 500 millivolts peak to peak and we also have perfect rectification uh 100 millivolts peak to peak i've disabled the input signal because it it started to become a bit too noisy and also i've um i've um uh enabled the average mode um, acquisition mode so that uh, this uh, waveform looks a bit better simply because i just had a bit too much noise on the breadboard it's not really it's not due to the circuit not being good enough it's due to the breadboard and you know my my experiments <clears throat> so here we have only the output signal 100 millivolt peak to peak we see that the signal is still very well rectified we do see um maybe uh, i don't know three millivolts of uh, incursion into the negative voltages here into the negative values but they are pretty much meaningless relative to the entire amplitude 50 millivolts again rectification works well we continue to have some 3 millivolts into the negative uh, vo values but again it's not that big of a deal and we have them only on certain um, uh, input um, values and not others 20 millivolts um by the way like like i showed you um they basically they um they guaranteed this circuit to work only for plus minus 50 millivolts which means 100 millivolts peak to peak and yet we see it working even at 50 millivolts peak to peak and even at 20 millivolts peak to peak so only plus minus 10 it's still working pretty well okay it's not perfect but it's still working pretty well which is uh <laughs> which is good which is uh, much better than the previous uh, circuits um also these um all of these te these tests were done with 200 hertz uh input signal um, personally i don't care about more because i i will not need it in the circuit that i'm building um, don't don't mind the uh, one kilohertz here or other values it's due, due to the fact that uh, at small voltages the, the oscill this oscilloscope has problems uh, calculating frequency correctly anyway after doing tests with 200 hertz i wanted to go up uh, and increase the frequencies and see basically um, how well uh, the circuit behaves of course in my tests um, I have um, slightly different results than in uh, their tests because they here they use here a capacitor for frequency compensation that is 47 picofarad in my case I use the 330 picofarad so basically almost 10 times more because i um i don't need to to use higher frequencies and also because on on breadboard uh, it uh, appeared to look uh, to work even better with higher capacitances here so really this is this has been uh, my only significant difference that instead of 47 picofarads i used the 330 picofarads uh, and also instead of 1 kilo ohm resistors I use 1.5 kilo ohms I thought that 1 kilo ohm is a bit too small value because um, I will want to go up to plus minus 10 volts and I don't want to have too much current going on here anyway so that being said <clears throat> at 5 uh, um, at, um, at 3 kilohertz 5 volt peak to peak we see a little bit of distortion happening around here 
from time to time, not always, but we have a little bit of distortion because the frequency tends to become a bit too high. But again, if we would decrease the, that capacitor's value, we would probably be able to work with higher frequencies as well. At 5 kilohertz, we see some larger distortions. At 10 kilohertz, we see some even larger distortions. And as we can see, they only happen on half uh, of the wave of the input signal. Um, also 5, mil 5 volts peak to peak so far. Then I, I uh, kept the 10 kilohertz uh, frequency on the input and I dragged down the amplitude 500 millivolts peak to peak. Uh, we see different kind of distortions. Again, the blue signal is the output one. Um, same 10 kilohertz but 100 millivolts peak to peak. We see even bigger distortions. Okay. Then I left the amplitude at 100 millivolts and I decreased the frequency. I fi at 5 kilohertz, we seem to have um, a bit of an improvement from the 10 kilohertz. Then at 1 kilohertz and 100 millivolts, again, we seem to be having almost a perfect um, rectification. 50 millivolts, 1 kilohertz, it's pretty good as well. 20 millivolts, 1 kilohertz, something decent, okay? And that's it. That's the end of my experiments. So, really, uh, this is uh, the bigger uh, reason why I wanted to do this video, to, to bring value to you by uh, showing you my experiments and my results, because um, in, in the case of the previous circuits, we don't get uh, enough informations from the internet. In the case of this Texas instrument circuit, we do have here um, all sorts of uh, all sorts of explanations and results, both simulated and uh, tested uh, on the actual um, oscilloscope. Um, however, I went to a bit of a different uh, set of parameters. So um, you get information from me that you cannot get from this uh, PDF file. Anyhow, I hope that all in all um, these circuits were useful and my explanations are useful to you. Thank you very much for uh, watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more in the future. Also, please uh, consider supporting my work on Patreon. The easier it is for me to buy components and perhaps even lab devices, the faster I can uh, study new things, make experiments, and come here to you and um, teach you as well, so that you don't have to spend so much time and energy learning these things. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.